G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockie Ups Full Driving, we're going to compare the Camp Boss Tire Deflator from All for Adventure versus the Storm Tire Deflator. We're even going to throw the ARB Easy Deflator into the mix. Price, accuracy, repeatability, let's get into the video. Now let's have a look at the testing setup. Well, I've got my mushy meter here for starters. That's basically a multimeter which outputs, in this case, to a phone or my tablet, an Android tablet. Now, I've got a five volt regulator power supply here, which I built, and that heads to our pressure transducer. Let's have a look at that. The pressure transducer is down here. Now, this tire has two valves, as you can see, one for monitoring and one for filling. Now, the pressure transducer takes a five volt regulated output from the power supply and feeds it back to my moshi meter so I can tell exactly how much pressure is in the tire at any point. I also can keep an eye on it visually using this gauge, and that works in 0.1 of a PSI increments. Righto. So once we've got the pressure out here, it heads back to my mushy meter here, where it gets recorded on my tablet via Bluetooth, so I can do a direct comparison deflator versus deflator versus deflator. Let's get into it. Now let's compare the prices. Now the left hand side here, 0 to 140 in Australian dollars, the first up the store, and well that comes in at $90 Australian. The Camp Boss is a bit more expensive, comes in at $125 Australian. I believe that's the all for adventure tax. Well, they've got to afford those disposable Rams and 79 somehow, I suppose. And finally, the ARB Easy Deflator coming in, the bigger the bunch, as far as uh, economy is concerned, at $69. Now, we're going to start with the storms. So in order to set your storms, you need to calibrate them periodically. You set your target pressure in your tyre about half a PSI above what the pressure you actually want to be. So I want 18 PSI in these tyres, so about 18 and a half. Now, what you do is you wind the locking ring all the way down, then you wind the cap all the way down, and you screw it all the way on. Once that's done, you back off the cap until the air starts rushing out, and you wind the cap slowly back in until the air just stops. Okay, now we're winding it back in. There we go, and then we hold on to the cap and we push the locking ring up against it, lock them down solid, and we should be calibrated now at 18 psi. Okay, on with the testing of the storms. Okay, so we're sitting at 38 psi. I'll enable the logging. Now we'll start the stopwatch. We've got the cap on there, just as you would in the field. We'll take the cap off. Put the storm on, and we'll see how she goes. There we go, we've deflated to 18.4 psi, so that's not too bad. We'll take the storm off, just as you would in the field, and we'll put the cap back on. Okay, now we can stop the stopwatch. Now I'm going to do this another four times, so we'll get five samples, so we can look at consistency in between deflations. Okay, that's run number five for the storm finished at 18.5. I'll tell you, it was pretty consistent. Let's check out the results before we move on to the camp boss. The first test, well, we've seen that before, and that came in at 18.4 psi. The second test, well, that came in at 18.2 psi, very close. Third run, well, that came in at 18.5 psi. The fourth run, again, came in at 18.5 psi. And final and fifth run, well, that came in at 18.4 psi. As you can see, very consistent. So our average was 18.4 psi and our standard deviation was 0.12. And for those who aren't familiar with what standard deviation is, that's just how far the furthest number from the average number is. So the lower the number, the more consistent the results. <laughs> okay, now we've got our heads around that. Let's get on with the next one. Now, one of the good things about the camp boss in comparison with the storm is it's able to be adjusted on the fly to suit conditions. So we screw back this locking ring, which exposes the gauge here. You might need your spectacles on if you're over 40 years old. And it seems to be set to about 20 PSI at the moment. Now, if we do two full revolutions, we now seem to be set on about 15 PSI. So one full revolution back the other way should get us to about 17.5 PSI. We want to be about 18 PSI, so... What's that? Fifth of a turn? Okay. And then you screw down the locking ring, and you're right to go. 18 PSI. Let's go check it out. 
now the storm's done, it's the camp boss's turn. So we'll start the stopwatch and we'll get this valve cap off. We're at 38 psi, as you can see. We'll screw the camp boss on. And start deflating. There we go. Camp boss has stopped at about 18.9 psi. But we'll get that off because we're still running the stopwatch. You're going to need to get the valve cap back on. The valve cap's back on. Beauty. We'll do that another four times to check for the consistency. Okay, that's the fifth and final run of the camp boss and 18.7 psi or 18.6. Not too bad. Okay. Now, of course, the first run came in at 18.9 psi. The second run, 18.7 psi. The third run, 18.7 psi. And the fourth run, 18.5 psi. With the final run, 18.8 psi. Now, that gave us an average of 18.7 psi with a standard deviation of 0.15 versus a 0.12 for the storms. But <laughs> realistically, it's uh it's very close for both of them so as far as repeatability is concerned that's not an issue for either the camp boss or the storms and now for my go-to the arb deflator so start the stopwatch and we'll go from 38 psi back down to 18 psi now i know these are quick but you have to do each individual tire and turn which is a disadvantage so i'll wind that on and from memory, it's about six turns out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that should be it. Off we go. There we are, 18 PSI. Well, the job's not done until you've wound the Schrader back in and put the valve cap back on after you've got the deflator off. Okay. So now we'll put the... Uh, Valve cap back on, and that's time. Okay. So what you can see from this graph is it took considerably longer to get deflating with the easy deflator than either the camp boss or the storm. Not only did I have to get that cap off and wind the deflator on, I had to get that Schrader valve out as well. But once I got that Schrader valve out, well, it rocketed down to 18 psi, a lot faster than either the storm or the camp boss. Then at the other end though, of course, we had to put the Schrader valve back in and wind that cap back on. Okay, and that took, again, considerably longer. Now let's compare those single tire deflation times. Zero to 45 PSI on the left-hand side, and we've got the time in seconds along the bottom. First up, the Storm. Not too shabby, four minutes and 24 seconds. What about that Cam Boss? Came in a little bit quicker at three minutes and 46 seconds. And finally, the ARB Easy Deflator. Oh, one minute and 27 seconds. Well, we obviously have a winner. Oh, well, hang on, what's that? We don't have a winner. You're telling me that the camp boss and the storm can simultaneously deflate more than one tyre? Well, you'd be right. So let's do the comparison for that. And now for the four tyre deflation comparison. First up, the storms. Well, you can see here that I've given myself three seconds in between leaving the first tyre once I've screwed it on and getting to the next tyre and starting to take that cap off. And that's given me a time of five minutes and three seconds. What about the camp boss? Remember, the camp boss are a little bit quicker than the storms, and they've come in at 4 minutes and 47 seconds. Now, finally, what I've been using, my piece start resistance, I could be wrong here. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, you've got to remember, I can only do these sequentially. I can't do these simultaneously, unlike the camp boss and the storm. And that's given me a time of 5 minutes and 51 seconds. That's over a minute behind the camp boss. Wow, learn something every day. Turns out I've been using the wrong deflator. Now, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way... We hope to see you out on the tracks.